Hello and welcome to The Thriller Zone. I'm your host, David Temple, on a summer bonus episode. Guess who is on the show today? Old time friend and up and coming star, Steve Stratton. Yeah, listen, I'm going to call you back. I've got a bigger name on the line. Steve Stratton. Oh my God. What's up? What's up, David? How you been, brother? I am so good. Hey, what, folks, look look who's here. A little bonus surprise episode here on the day after the 4th, right in the middle of a holiday. Steve Stratton. So good to see you, buddy. So good to be here and have all my fingers after the 4th. That's sort of exciting in my family. <laughs> Remember when we were kids and we, we thought it was a good idea to do bottle rockets and cherry bombs into mailboxes and silly places like that? I can hold a black cat longer than you can. <laughs> God, can you remember we did that? Hey, look, dude, I can hold it. I can hold it. How many of our friends lost, like, tips of their fingers? <laughs> a lot, yeah. Yeah. Well, folks, you know Steve from Shadow Sanction, of course, uh, the Landsperer Wolf series. Uh, you, you may have heard it from an audio book. <clears throat> that, that would be your cue, Steve, to say something about the <laughs> audio book. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, awesome, awesome audio book, getting great reviews, uh, people love the audio. Um, it's like a whole different demographic of people who are just like audiobook fans. So it's really cool to learn that side of the business. Thanks, David, man. It's, it's awesome. Dude, it was my pleasure and honor. And I'll tell you something. I've been doing some research recently on the statistics and the trends of audiobooks. We know that audiobooks are successful and they've been popular for years. There are people who say audiobooks were the original podcast. So I'm a big fan of both. And having done audiobooks for decades, uh, it was great to lend my talents to yours. But so we've got this one, which is the audiobook. And of course, book number two in the uh, Shadow Tear series. But you have in your hands something i'd love to hear about right now because i haven't i haven't actually gotten a physical copy yet <gasps> a warrior's path this is the lance bear wolf novella you've been hearing about on social media yeah Did it uh it, it published on the 11th and uh at one point i was uh down to like uh in the below 200 i'd never been below 2600 and it broke 500, then it broke 200. Yeah, and it's, it's holding in the threes, and, and that's very exciting. And as, a, I think, a factor of that, my first book, my debut novel, which mm -hmm. debuted two years ago on the 14th, Flag Day, it's number 18. Wow. I, looked at, I looked it up. I, I was just stunned. It's like, what happened? <laughs> I'm so grateful. Man, see, folks, in case you're, you know, you're thinking about, oh, I'll never make it in this business. And look, we can all be thinking that because it's competitive. Uh, publishers are diminishing. Uh, page count is shrinking because of costs, etc. We re read recently that Costco is now moving uh, their books that they have for sale on there on the main floor like they used to have year round. Now it's only going to holidays. Uh, I've heard rumors that Barnes & Noble are taking some of their thriller books and kind of pushing them to the back of the store because other things are more popular. So you're up against a lot. But if you, my point to this is take it from Steve, who I have now known for coming up on, oh, well, we met in Thriller Fest 2019. Was it before that? No, I think it was, it was that right was before. Right, yeah. And I've seen you go from just, man, I hope I can just do this to... I did this. I did the sequel. I got the audiobook. Now I've got a novella. And I, I know you're working on the next book. I mean, tell us about that process. We don't have much time. I understand you're on a busy, busy schedule, but uh, just kind of give us a feel for that. Yeah, I was very lucky. I uh, got a book deal for the debut novel fairly quickly from a small publisher, mm -hmm. not a big house. But as Jeff Wilson said, it's like, you know, take the deal, learn from it, grow from there. And so published two with them. Then they went out of business. And it was my readers who told me they wanted to learn more about my protagonist, Lance Bearwolf. So I wrote the novella. And, and it's amazing. Uh, like I talked with, with uh, Andrews and Wilson's on a podcast, I really got to know uh, my protagonist very well writing the novella. And it made it easier to write the third book. Nice. And I was like, I should have done, <laughs> I should have done this earlier. But um, when he went out of business, I had to learn Amazon, put my books up there. I still need to get them on Ingram Spark, so more learning coming. Um, but, you know, change is the one thing we can count on. So adapting, growing, and continuing to push. And then in the middle of that, 
starting a new series and getting another book deal. So wow. it's been an exciting time. And being a part of the community, uh, especially like if you're a veteran, we have a great community of veteran writers, but also just the thriller community is amazing. And if you give, then you get back. I mean, I had no idea that Simon Gervais, of all people, international bestseller in New York Times, all that would actually bur blurb my novella. So audiobook, you know, that was so cool and fun working with you on that. Yeah. And so my collection starts is, is growing. And hopefully at some point, you know, people will be able to get into that backlist and, and uh, we'll just continue having fun telling stories. A couple of quick things. <clears throat> and, and, and Steve just mentioned this, folks. Um, I remember when I wrote my very first book, I want to say it was like 2003 and I did what you did. I learned the Amazon thing. I had to learn Ingram sparks and it was even more complex create space back then and mm -hmm. all different kinds of ways to do audiobooks. But it, you got to just put in the time because unless you, if you want to, I was always about, I just want to try it and see if it works. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to get an agent maybe later, but I've always worked on that 10,000 hour theory or 10 book theory was my thing. I'm going to write nine books on my own. And then on that 10th, I'm going to go for an agent so that I could really know the business as though it's all up to me. Cause guess what folks, the business is now getting more and more up to you. And what I want to really walk away with, I've watched Steve, like I said, I've watched him from the beginning and sure it takes tenacity and hard work and belief in yourself, but you made the best comment. And this is the one thing I loved when I met everybody at Thriller Fest in 2019. And I, my, my feelings have changed a little bit about conferences, but the main key is it's the networking of the community makes such a big difference. That's right. I mean, I learned so much and, you know, I read everybody else in the Thriller community's books. I have taken Don Bentley's books, Brad Taylor's books, and literally tore them up so I could learn how to be a better writer, pasted them all over the wall. It sort of looked like a conspiracy theory, you know, <laughs> movie with the string and everything like that. But, sure. you know, um, it, I'm with you. It, it takes a lot of repetitions, and I'm still learning. I just had an editor say that, you know, we need to start thinking about ele elevating my game to the next level, especially when writing first person. So not every sentence starts with, I did this, I did that, I did this, you know. Right. Continuous learning, and I, I love it because it's always a challenge. Well, I'm going to reiterate this point once again. A lot of the guys out there, now I'm not saying that you're going to dial up Andrews Wilson, uh, uh, you know, Brian or Jeff, like Steve did. And, of course, he's made relationships. But I'm not going to say you're going to dial them up and they're going to go, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. I'll give you some notes. I'll give you a blurb. That's not going to happen to the average bear. But build the community. Like Steve said, give back. You're going to get back. And I think if you give out without the drive and intention of getting back, you'll be better off. It's like this podcast. I did this because I love talking about books and I love meeting guys like you. And, um, and, it's, and it's grown because it's grown organically. And I would say the same thing to writers. But so let's t tell me just a real in the few minutes that we got. T talk to me about this novella because I love there's a couple things. I'm going to interrupt myself if you'll bear with me. I'm kind of jacked up on coffee. Novellas are good. A lot of people go, oh, Dave, nobody takes a novella seriously. Really? Really? You, you want to take a little look at Hollywood Reporter and such and find out how many book, how many movies have been adapted or TV shows adapted from novellas? Short is sometimes sweet. So talk, tell me about this one. Yeah, I, and time. I'll just echo what you said, because actually even Andrews and Wilson, who have so much going on, they wrote short stories because... Nobody has the attention span to read a full, full novel in, in Hollywood, right? No. And, and, you know, and so it's almost like doing your pitch to an agent, but, but extended. So, um, yeah, I went back to, to when Lance Bear Wolf was 14, and his biological father passes away from a heroin overdose on the Crow Reservation. So, and that, because that's what, uh, a thread. If you've read the books, and it's not a spoiler, but his, he has a hatred that bordered on pathological in the first book and he's he's grown out of that but he really does not like the poisoning of america that's happening for the cartels and so add in a few dead family members and you know you've got a book about revenge so i take him through his military career into um uh where he 
uh, actually gets into special forces and asks for and gets assigned to seventh group. So he's down in Colombia in South America and his good buddy, Morgan, um, and this might be experiential. It might not be, but Morgan grabbed him and said, come on in here. Let me show you what we're doing with the DEA, right? We're training army soldiers, but we're also doing this. And so Lance gets really into this idea of, of, of supporting the DEA in the ways possible that the military can do outside of the U.S. Yeah. And that starts him, he, he's a techie, so that starts him down a path. So it's a great, great fun read. I want to say something without sounding like I'm on some kind of a pulpit or a soapbox and preaching, but we all know that drugs are bad. We all know that drugs come back and forth across the border. And I know that there are, we could spend an entire day talking about that and I'm not going to. However, if you don't, and I thought about this when I was doing your audiobook because I spent a lot, hundreds of hours on that book. And it gave me a whole new appreciation and respect for what our guys and gals do to protect those borders and how much of a poison poisoning of the system that it is. So I want to say I salute you because this is not just a thriller. This is a warning sign, you know? Yeah. And, so. and, uh, you know, it, the, the fourth, the, the third book, is is gonna it takes called Caribbean Harvest, oh. and and it's gonna take place in Cuba, oh. right? And said so they get involved, and then the fourth book is a little bit different. The fifth book will definitely be about fentanyl and everything else that's going on. So I've already got the outline for the fifth book going, while I'm doing three <laughs> three other things. It's like um, I some I sleep somewhere. I'm not sure. But. So you got book one, book two. Novella sneaks in here. You're already working on book three, but you already know what book five is about. Folks, back to a point again, and I'm going to sound like I'm, uh, well, yeah, I'm president of Steve Stratton's fan club. There you go. I said it. I admit it. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, yeah. And that is foresight. And I know something about you, Steve. You, you, you don't really take no for an answer. The funny thing is you're not arrogant or uh, bad about it. You're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> kind of like your publisher, and I'm not bad mouthing anybody, but your publisher kind of dropped the ball in some ways, probably, probably, and uh, then he ended up going out of business. But nice thing about you, you learned from it. You went, okay, hey, there are a lot of people that don't learn from it or they whine about it, and I say, hey, pull your pants up, big boy pants, move on. So kudos to you. All right, closing thoughts. Uh, of course, folks, I would be remiss if I said uh, didn't say check out shadow sanction and of course the audiobook if you want uh, by the way which is on audible now right finally got it up on audible thank you awesome yeah amazon is uh persnickety but that's <laughs> actually a good thing because you know you've got perfection folks i have jumped through more hoops for audible and amazon than i care to remember but when it's uploaded you know you can trust it because it has gone through the wash, the ringer. All right, and so Warrior's Path. Show me that book one more time because I, I just I dig the cover, and I want to say a big old props. Look at that. Props to Pim Van Offeren. Am I saying that right? Exactly. Monologue Digital out of the Netherlands. What an amazing trailer, right? Yeah, I spend way too much time giving him press. He should do some, you know, he should throw this dog a bone. But <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, not really. Um, but he does exceptional, his team does exceptional work. And that trailer is what caught my eye, and it's dynamite. And I've seen it pop up. Matter of fact, I, I'm going to drop a name here because you mentioned Simon Gervais. By the way, big love to Simon Gervais. He's he is a great writer. He's a solid dude. He knows the business. And I sent him a direct message just in the last couple of days. And I said, say, Simon, did you see Steve's uh, book trailer? You should think about that. And we went down the path about that. But anyway, nice to get that blurb from him. And oh, yeah. folks, I will say, when I said to you, you know, you don't, these guys may not give you blurbs. You can always ask. You, and, and if you get a no, you try and you get a, you keep going until you get a yes. That's kind of my theory. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Closing thoughts before we scoot and let you head on into your weekend? You know, it's funny because in Special Forces, we talk a lot about grit, resilience. Mm -hmm. Guess what you need to become an author? <laughs> not, not only do you need to know how to write and how to pitch, you're going to be part salesperson, part marketing, but it takes some grit and resilience, right? Yeah. And, and the fact that my publisher went out of business, you know, 
okay, bummer. I learned from from my first publisher. I'm sure I'll learn from this new one that uh, Winding Road Stories that I signed with, and keep learning because that's what life is about: lessons and and uh, moving forward. So yeah. I I appreciate you, David. Thank you so much for all you do for the thriller community and us authors. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, nice little uh, heads up and uh, hi to Michael Dolan, who's taking good care of you because he's he's got a good shop over there at Winding Road Stories. Folks, once again, it's Steve Stratton. You know how to get a hold of him. It is stevestrattonusa.com. Steve, have a great rest of the weekend and happy 4th in retrospect. Thank you. His fingers are still hot. <laughs> Thanks again for the quick stop by, Steve, and we will see you again right down the road. Folks, join us on Monday when our special guest is Brian Freeman. Join us Monday the 8th when Brian Freeman stops by the Thriller Zone. <laughs>